morning, brethren. Nice to be here. Uh, for my sermon today, I want to thank uh, Sheila Roach and uh, thank all of you. The title of my some the title of my sermon it is the gospel. Do you believe this? The gospel. Do you believe this? There is something interesting about the the concluding words, the sent words that Jesus spoke. Do you believe this? I mean, many people can recite the first two uh, verses, but normally, I don't know for what reason, they just uh, are not able to complete the send, complete the whole text. So today we want to focus our attention on, do you believe this? Uh, before we come to this particular uh, uh, answer this question, let's make two simple observations. Uh, I titled it as the gospel, do you believe this? What is the gospel? I don't have to explain anything, but let's put it in simple language so that we are clear on what exactly the gospel is. What is the gospel? The gospel in, in simple words is God in the person of Jesus Christ came to die that we might live. Jesus was and is God. He is the second person of the triune Godhead who came in the flesh, lived among us, and went to the cross for our salvation. Yes, brethren, we all struggle. We struggle with sin. We struggle with helplessness in the face of sickness and death. We are captives of time and space. But there is good news. God, in his mercies, grants us forgiveness. And we can be rescued from our hopeless condition and the sentence of death. God came from outside of time and space and entered into it. He came from immortality to mortality. He took a body of flesh and empowered that body with his divinity to rescue us, to save us. Do you believe this? As one writer beautifully puts it, he came from the bosom of the father to the bosom of a woman. He put on humanity that we might put on divinity. He became son of man that you and I may become sons of God. Let's move to our second observation. Uh, our second observation has to do with the preliminary question. We want to focus on, do you believe this? The exact words of Jesus. But before we that, be that, I think it is important that we take up a preliminary question. And that is, where is our life? From where do we draw our life? Uh, in the first century, when the, when the gospel was written, the, the people uh, believed that man had a soul and a body. The body, can, the body perishes, but the soul is immortal and continues beyond, beyond uh, mortality. So they believe the soul of a man is immortal while the body perishes. But in Romans chapter 8, uh, Paul makes some very uh, interesting comments and clarifies. Paul draws a clear distinction between the life in the flesh and the life in the spirit. The truth that Paul proclaimed was that the breath of life each of us has is the breath of God himself. God gives us life by his spirit. And the only reason we exist is that God continues to breathe his life into us. We are, as, as some theologians correctly put it, we are embodied spirits. That is, we have a body and a soul or a spirit. And they both are interconnected. And we can't have one without the other. God gives us both. And as Paul said, in him we live and move and have our being. And so, brethren, God does something amazing, you know. He, he takes care of our physical life and also our eternal well-being. He does something marvelous. He, God from the heavenly abode came to, to us. He gave us of himself in the person of the incarnate son, Jesus Christ. The I am who is the life came to give life to us by his spirit. And I thought that preliminary question is a good start, start to begin with. Now let's move on to our main focus, the gospel. Do you believe it? Now let's set the stage. You see, the disciples, Jesus and his disciples, just left Jerusalem and Judea. 
and they were uh, almost uh, reaching Jericho in the region. They reached near Jericho. And uh, when they were there, they left, they left Jerusalem and Judea because there was a threat on the life of Christ. And so the moment they landed in, in Jericho, uh, what happened was they got a message saying that Lazarus, our dear friend, is seriously ill. And uh, uh, what Jesus did was he just waited. Uh, he waited for two days. And after two days, he announced, uh, he announced uh, to his disciples, we will go, uh, let's go uh, to uh, the place Judea, the Bethany where Lazarus his two sisters were there and let and uh, let me wake and wake wake up uh, wake up Lazarus but uh, uh, the disciples took Jesus word literally and they told if Jesus if Lazarus is asleep he will wake up on his own why do we have to go then uh, Jesus clarified no the Lazarus is is no more and we have to go and uh, uh, see him. And uh, he decides to go and uh, the, they begin the downward journey. They come to Bethany. When they come to Bethany, uh, what Martha does was she leaves her sister Mary uh, to uh, do the cooking and the household work. And she goes uh, to meet uh, Jesus. She goes to meet Jesus. Now, when she meet Jesus, she blurted out as is normally, Lord, if only you were here, my brother would not have passed away. And Jesus told her something, you know, he said, your, bro Lazarus, your brother Lazarus will be resurrected. Now, Martha and, uh, uh, took it. Uh, Martha had no problem understanding this because like all the Jews, she, she also believed that the, those who are dead will be resurrected on the last day. But Jesus gave her a, a shocker. And you know, what did he say? Uh, he told her, he told her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives, lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I mean, uh, I think this jolted her. Uh, she was trying to, she was having a struggle in her uh, belief in believing Jesus. And uh, she, it took her some, it took a while. And uh, Martha was trying to uh, struggle and uh, the Lord helped her. And then she comes to, she comes to realize that Jesus is the Messiah. And she makes a very profound statement like uh, the apostle, Peter, she says, you are the Messiah, the one coming in the, in the kingdom of, in the com coming kingdom. And uh, you see, what happens was, she, Martha was shifting her hope. She had her hope of the resurrection of her brother in the future. But now slowly, she realized that she is in the, the, the resurrection, is, is, is in the, it also, uh, uh, pertains to the now because Jesus who is the life and who is the resurrection is present with her and she she graduates I should say in her faith and so we see that Martha Martha's faith increases so let's ask the question do you believe this do you believe the gospel uh, what happens is brethren um, do you believe this? This is this. These words of Jesus were not spoken at a funeral site. They were not spoken spoken at a memorial service. They were not spoken in a what he calls an open air uh, uh, open air stadium of evangelistic rally. But they were, so they were spoken on a one is to one basis to Martha, and Jesus was pointedly telling her, uh, telling confronting her. Do you believe? that I am the resurrection, that I am the life. And, and so brethren, the words, do you believe, are probe, is a probing question for all Christians, for all disciples. It's a challenge to know, do you believe? And, and uh, let's see what happens is, do you believe this is true? You see, the, Jesus is the life 
the resurrection and he is present with us he is present with them and he is telling them that uh, you need to trust me you need to be careful you need to be careful and so he tells martha uh, uh, let us let us go and uh, visit the tomb of, of lazarus they go to the tomb and uh, it is and then he says he, he tells the bystanders to remove the stone and or roll away the stone but martha protests and she says no please don't do it it is now four days since lazarus was buried and the stench is emanating it is it is not please don't do that but jesus tells her again he poses the question martha do you believe it is for god's glory and uh, the bystanders uh, roll away the stone and we know the what happens jesus calls out to lazarus he calls out by his name lazarus lazarus come out and uh, to the amazement of all the people standing the 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 tomb of death could not hold the dead person you see what happens was lazarus was dead and uh, buried in the grave for four days a dead man heard the voice of jesus because jesus is the life uh, the tomb of jesus which is the the tomb of jesus which held the dead could not hold the dead and so it released and lazarus comes out with his uh, grave clothes come comes out and uh, 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 jesus tells the bystanders please unbind him brethren and so brethren we see what happens is jesus performed a great miracle a miracle of bringing a man who was who was dead back to life but it is interesting to note that jesus did not do this miracle all by himself he 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 took the uh, he, he solicited he elicited the support of the people and he wanted them to be participants and and so brethren we see jesus now showing forth now that he is the resurrection and he is the life so what exactly do the words do you believe <coughs> do you believe this mean uh, well i think it means ex- two things it means it is loud and clear the gospel do you believe this first and foremost do you believe this is a call is a call to be partakers in the new life of christ jesus is saying you please trust me trust me i am the life and i am the resurrection jesus is calling you and me from spiritual bondage and decay he is calling each of us and saying wake up awaken to life that is yours in union with me live into that life it's real it's eternal life he says i am the resurrection and the life indeed jesus is the great i am he is our life Be- let's believe it let's receive it and let's live in- into it a second th- thing we understand is what it means is it is a call not only to be partakers in the new life of christ it is also a call to be participants in the new life in christ uh, it is interesting to note that when jesus performed this miracle of bringing back a dead man to life he did not do it on his own uh, he told the people uh, roll away the stone he he took the participation of people and the people were participating and they rolled away the stone and further we see that jesus didn't stop there he he, he told the people unbind unbind the, the the unbind lazarus of his grave clothes and they do that brethren god has called you and me not only to participate in the new life in christ he has also called us to be participants in the new life we we join our, our elder brother jesus christ in in his mission of reaching out to the world and we help the world to to come out of its spiritual bondage and decay and so brethren the words do you believe are a very powerful words it is a call to be part- partakers in the new life in christ it is a call to be participants in the new life of christ uh, as we approach brethren the holy week and as we uh, we will be 
having the upcoming Easter celebrations, may we embrace the reality that Jesus in his death and resurrection has set us free to live in him. As we live in our broken world, we can join Jesus in his tears for the lost creation. We can share the good news that Jesus has come and is calling us to himself. May we go and tell others who are still waiting and weeping the good news. And let's share the good news that Jesus is our resurrection and our life. Uh, shall we pray and conclude our message? <clears throat> Father, we just want to thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the resurrection and the life and that by your spirit, we are made new. Lord, speak to us now and show us how in each of our lives, as we listen in our hearts, how you are the resurrection and the life. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to be in us, with us and for us in real ways. Thank you, Father, that through Jesus and by your spirit, we have life, not just in the world to come, but now, but now a new life, a new way of thinking and being, even though we are weak in our flesh and you love us faithfully. We thank you, we give you all the praise and glory. We ask you to continue to be with us and help us live this out in us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>